Section 1 of the Expedition of Humphrey Clinker. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by David Lawrence. The Expedition of Humphrey Clinker by Tobias Smollett. Section 1. To Mr. Henry Davis, bookseller in London. Abergavenny, August 4th. Respected Sir, I have received your esteemed favour of the 13th Ultimo, whereby it appeareth that you have perused those same letters, the which were delivered unto you by my friend, the Reverend Mr. Hugo Ben, and I am pleased to find you think they may be printed with a good prospect of success. Inasmuch as the objections you mention, I humbly conceive are such that may be redargued, if not entirely removed, and first in the first place, as touching what prosecutions may arise from printing the private correspondence of persons still living, give me leave, with all due submission, to observe that the letters in question were not written and sent under the seal of secrecy, that they have no tendency to the malafama or prejudice of any person whatsoever but rather to the information and edification of mankind so that it becometh a sort of duty to promulgate them in usum publicum besides i have consulted mr davy higgins an eminent attorney of this place who after due inspection and consideration declareth that he doth not think the said letters contain any matter which will be held actionable in the eye of the law finally if you and i should come to a right understanding i do declare in verbo sacerdotis that in case of any prosecution i will take the whole upon my own shoulders even clawed fine and imprisonment though i must confess i should not care to undergo flagellation uh, tam ad turpitudinem quam ad aminatudinem bueno speccans secondly concerning the personal resentment of mr justice lismahago i may say non flashi facio i would not willingly vilipend any christian if peradventure he deserveth that epithet albeit i am much surprised that more care is not taken to exclude from the commission all such vagrant foreigners as may be justly suspected of disaffection to our happy constitution in church and state god forbid that i should be so uncharitable as to affirm positively that the said lismahago is no better than a jesuit in disguise but this i will assert and maintain totus veribus that from the day he qualified he has never once seen intra templi paratis that is to say within the paris church thirdly with respect to what passed at mr kendall's table when the said lismahago was so brutal in his reprehensions i must inform you my good sir that i was obliged to retire not by fear arising from his minatory reproaches which as i said above i value not of a rush but from the sudden effect produced by a barbarous roe which I had eaten at dinner, not knowing that the said roe is in certain seasons violently cathartic, as Galen observeth in his chapter Peri Ichtos. Fourthly and lastly, with reference to the matter in which I got possession of these letters, it is a circumstance that concerns my own conscience only, sufficeth it to say, I have fully satisfied the parties in whose custody they were, and by this time I hope I have also satisfied you in such ways, that the last hand may be put to our agreement, and the work proceed with all convenient expedition, in which I hope I rest, respectfully yours, your very humble servant, Jonathan Dustwich. P.S. I propose deo volente to have the pleasure of seeing you in the great city toward all hallowtide when i shall be glad to treat with you concerning a parcel of m s sermons of a certain clergyman deceased a cake of the right leaven for the present taste of the public 
verbum sapiente nc jd end of section one